let me send a very, very warm welcome to His Excellency Mr. Eli Cohen, the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Government of Israel, Shri Gajendra Singh Ji Shikhawat, Minister of Jal Shakti, Government of India, friends from industry, both in India and Israel, ladies and gentlemen. Minister, Minister, I think you will observe that such a large gathering itself shows great interest in the relationships between our two countries. Um, I happened to visit Israel first in 1997. Uh, I was leading the industry and the then chief minister of Punjab. So that was a Punjab mission which we mounted uh, in Israel. And I was pleasantly surprised, being a very poor student in geography and history put together, to see the, the development Israel had made at that point of time. But India recognized Israel way back in 1950. So more or less, I think we are talking about the 73rd year. So clearly, as we celebrated the 75th year of independence, very soon the two countries should start looking at celebrating the event, uh, completion of 75 years. The, the bilateral trade, which was $200 million in 1992, when the diplomatic relations uh, started yeah, between both the countries, uh, we've just closed at under $9 billion in March 2023. Now, I think that is a, that is a great, uh, uh, significant uh, uh, achievement. But having said that, can we do more? My view is certainly yes. And I go back to my visits, uh, number of visits after 1997. And by the way, we also had ECI Telecom as our partners uh, for uh, transmission equipment in Telecom. Uh, I did share this uh, with Ambassador Lau. Uh, Israeli businessmen have been hesitant in coming and investing in India. And I really don't know the reason. I know Jews are very, very shrewd businessmen. If they've gone over, all over the world, why is it that when the world is knocking at India, they are still uh, not taking that call? And let me give you the reasons. If we look at the, the missions, the Prime Minister's missions which were mounted, Make in India, Startup India, Skill India, and now we're talking of digital India. Billions of dollars are, are pouring in on, on, on FDI. But I think it's more importantly the, the opportunities which are which are immense. Um, we today have almost 200 mobile phone manufacturing units present in India. Apple just uh, you know they, they had the manufacturing facilities, they launched it was sold very recently. And then clearly uh, under the performance linked incentive scheme, PLI, which the, which the government of India has announced in various sectors, I believe there are some of the areas where we need to look, look at. Agriculture, dairy are a given. I think that is something which we don't have to really talk because this has been talked multiple number of times. Uh, the collaboration with the Water Institute and CII needs to be extended much, much beyond. Today, when we see Punjab, Haryana, um, and of course, Rajasthan, which, uh, uh, which have the dearth of underground water, we can even just double that, look at the white uh, uh, you know, revolution, which can help the dairy farmers, or the farmers in allied sector. But what I'm trying to do, or say here, is I'm going beyond. <clears throat> I think this is the time when it is the most crucial time in the bilateral relationship of Israel and India, when India is celebrating its decade, the, the, the uh, uh, decade of technology. We are developing 5G stacks. We, are, we have opened space sector to the private sector. ISRO has started launching rockets. There are now rockets being manufactured in India. So space, cyber security, artificial intelligence, beyond agriculture, uh, dairy, and water. And let me just come to water. I think, uh, I believe, uh, since the minister, honorable minister is here, I'm sure he would also touch upon. 
This is something where we need Israeli technologies to augment the water resources, save underground water from uh, getting depletion further in the, in the farming sector, in the farming area. And uh, uh, all in all, uh, the, the, the immense opportunities, which I just mentioned, is something which is only the tip. India is a very, very vast country with very, very vast resources. Uh, and we are being led by Prime Minister Modi, who is uh, giving this country a new direction, a new vision. We have uh, ministers who are proactively driving the agenda of growth in India. So therefore, the, the, the area which I talked about, I'm, I'm sure there will be many, many more areas and uh, the two businesses will engage uh, during the day deliberation and, I, and I, I've seen Ambassador now that I must uh, thank and compliment you for your push in, the, in increasing the bilateral uh, uh, trade ties. There will be opportunities. CII will, is always present for the Indian industry and the Israeli industry who want to come to India uh, to, to make sure that you talk to the right partners, to make sure that the Israeli businesses understand the, uh, the, the regulatory regime in India and, uh, and, and also make sure that we start taking baby steps, which can then move on to large steps and make the two countries even much, much closer than we are today. Tourism is one other area. Um, I think uh, Israel has a rich, diverse history. India has thousands and thousands of years of uh, rich cultural diversity, rich cultural history, arts, artisans. So I'm trying to through the Indian, uh, through the Israeli industry businessmen who are here, my friends, to become the ambassadors of India and go and start talking about what India can offer with your friends back in Israel. In the end, I can only say the uh, academia and ind industry must start partner partnering together. Uh, there is a lot of research which, which we need to do. There are strengths both on both sides, Israel and India. We can partner on cutting edge research. We can uh, partner of de uh, in developing products and, uh, and services and software solutions. So I would say let's uh, take advantage of the synergies on both sides, come together and walk with a, with a single mission of just not increasing bilateral ties between the two countries, but how we can make a larger and positive impact across the globe. Thank you very much, Mansoor. Your Excellencies, Minister Shekawat, my friend, Minister Cohen, Ambassador Gilon, our host, uh, Mr. Mittal, thank you for hosting this event in the CII. Such event is fruitful for sure and it's very essential for all of us. As you mentioned, Mr. Mittal, trade between Israel and uh, between Israel and India is growing. And it's grown by about a third from the last year to the current year, but $9 billion is still far from being enough. I'm sure that both of us can work together to make the connection and the turnover, the business turnover, much, much stronger and bigger than it's currently as it is now. And this is one of the essence of what we're doing here as well. As you know, there is a lot of field of collaboration between Israel and, and India, software services, chemical industries, machinery and trade and defense equipment are the leading ones, but the potential is much broader than this. Israel and India have excellency in innovation and technology, and we can take this benefit and really to bring much more better essence to all we do together. Your Honorable Prime Minister of India, Prime Minister Modi, uh, termed the phrase in the G20 summit, which I remember and I will quote now saying, one earth, one family, and one future. One Earth, we all know that and some of the technologies here are coming here to serve our Earth, like water technologies, agrotech technologies and other. One family, unfortunately, is we can see the word now, I'm not sure that we can speak about one family. There is a lot of conflict, a lot of problems in many places. But definitely us, Israelis and Indians, feel as one family and not from now, from a long time ago. One future, well, again, if we look at the near future, at least, the economical future, we see some very dark clouds on the skies. 2023 and unfortunately 2024 will not be a prosperity years, and I'm sure that most of the world economies 
will shrink. For in the future to get an Israeli in the FTA. And I mentioned as well uh, the I2U2 uh, incentive uh, initiative. I2, for those who don't know, is the two I's, India and Israel. U2 is the USA and the UAE. We were very happy that our Prime Minister two years ago actually made a breakthrough and made the Abraham Accords with the UAE, Bahrain, other countries. And since the good ties between us, India, UAE, and of course the USA, I'm sure that the both partners can make a lot of new businesses together. So the time is short and we're here to do business and we're here to make new ties in our organization as well as the Export Institute, which is leading with us uh, the incentive here and then the, the chambers, of course, the, the, the Israeli Asia and Israeli India chambers will do the utmost uh, to do that. And Sabine Segalwitz here and Bernstein and Shu will assist with their teams as well to make this happen. We'll do everything to do, everything we can to do it happening, to increase business, to give new incentives and initiatives to everything and to make our future brighter for the one family we have and of course to the earth that we live in. Thank you very much. Good morning everyone. It's a pleasure to me being here today. I visit uh, your beautiful country, Mr. Minister, a few years ago when I was in the business sector. Now I'm coming as the foreign minister. My good friend, Minister Trashikati, it's a pleasure being in your beautiful country. Mr. Metal, thank you very much for your warm words. Warm tome, ambassador. I'm very delighted to open this business forum with the business delegation that came all the way from Israel. And they told me, uh, Mr. Minister, that Israel and India, we are together 20% of the world. Therefore, we must do things together. And therefore, here we are. So, it's a great a, a pleasure for us. And uh, it's very important to emphasize that Israel and India are strategic partners. We are not competing each other. We definitely complete each other. And therefore, we had a lot to do. <laughs> to hosting with Israel, with Prime Minister Netanyahu, the trains that come from India will go to South Arabia and then by train till Haifa port in Israel and from there to the markets in Europe. I think that this route is the vision of our relations. I know the phrase of the Prime Minister Modi which is speaking about making India. I think that this route can be very important for our future that uh, we can see uh, together in the other industry uh, as well. Our countries share, and we have a lot in common, both of us a vibrant democracy with a huge culture, and uh, we cooperate and we are working together with the Jewish people and the Indian people for more than 2,000 years. But right now, I believe that in the coming 2,000 years, we can do much more. Thank you all and have a successful day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the pleasure to invite Sri Gajinder Singh Shekhawat, Minister of Jal Shakti, Ministry of Jal Shakti, Government of India. Dr. Rolpalman, now Mr. His Excellency Ambassador, <coughs> Mr. Naur Gira, Sri Rakesh Bhakti Nittaji, and the people distinguished that day in this hall. I congratulate 
Pregnancy is well. CIA, India is well. And the Ministry of Economy and Industry for organizing this important event. I also extend a warm welcome to all the guests participating in this Indo-Israel Business Forum. This year holds great significance in terms of India-Israel bilateral relations as both the countries celebrate 30 years of diplomatic relations. India and Israel continue to cement bilateral ties after year and year. Dear friends, the foundation of the relationship between India and Israel has deep roots and a long history. As the world undergoes important changes, the strategic importance of the India-Israel relationship has only increased. India celebrates its 75th year of independence and has entered the Amrit Kal. Israel too is celebrating its 75th year of independence. Further, it further provides an occasion to set new goals of cooperation. As Sumitra uh, mentioned, that since at the time of beginning, our trade, the bilateral trade was 200 million, 200 million. And in this last journey of 75 years, it has arrived to uh, 9 billion. And as Minister rightly said that it has the potential to achieve this uh, the magic number of 20 billion. Otherwise, also we are in we are celebrating the 75th year of independence and the relationship of age of age old relationship which has ripened to 75 years. So it, in 75 years. In mathematically also, if the 200 billion should reach the 20 billion, it is is 75 years. So I think it's achievable and we have to work and we have to take a call today that this forum will agree that the gap of this 45 times to the 75 times, it is to be worked upon and this gap need to be filled in the next couple of years and in that year when the, in the, in the 20, 2047 we will celebrate the 100th year and the centenary year both of the countries are going to celebrate their independence. So by the time it should reach to the 100 times more so it is that we, we have to work on that also. So India and Israel are not only the bilateral partners and as Minister Thad said, it is not strategic, we are the strategic partners, we are not the competitors and we are committed to address some of the world's largest challenges by joint investment and new initiatives in water, energy, transport, space, health and food sectors through India, Israel, UA, USA network. I am proud to inform that India and Israel have bilateral Consultative mechanisms in areas including water, agriculture, counterterrorism, and defense. The defense sector is an important area of cooperation between India and Israel. And both countries have made significant progress. It is appropriate to mention that to further our relationship ahead, today we are signing a joint statement of intent between NMCG and Marshall to establish India-Israel Centre of Water Technology at IIT Ruhi. India's economy was earlier included in the Fuzai 5, a term coined by investment firm Morgan Stanley. But today our economy has been counted among the world's fabulous five economies. Given the rate at which the economy is growing, it is clear that by 2027, India will be the world's third largest economy. Not only this, India's GDP is estimated to, be, to increase to United States almost 8.5 trillion in the next 10 years. It shows that India has become a center of hope and faith for the world. Being the Minister of Government of India and responsible for water security, I must affirm the fact that today water has become a global issue and in the wake of climate change, it is more pertinent for countries in the world to come together and cooperate in water sector. 
The role of private sector and business leaders like you is vital in providing the solutions and in addressing the water security problems. Dear friends, recognizing the importance of integrated water resources management, our Vijayadevi Prime Minister, Honorable Narendra Modi, has created a dedicated Ministry of Jal Shakti in 2019, which has given greater coherence and synergy to our efforts for water management in India. Today, we have committed investment of more than US dollars, 240 billion in the water sector through government resources in partnership with private innovators, startups, and water user associations. Just as an example, I would like to mention particularly three programs of the ministry. Our ambitious Namami Ringa Mission, which is recently recognized as the one of the top 10 world restoration flagship programs to revive the natural world by United Nations, has created a paradigm shift in river resolution, pollution abatement, and conservation of ecosystem along the holistic approach to river basin management. Arthuranga, which is a model of circular economy, is testament of creating environmentally friendly sustainable practices of the resource management by local community for water security. Our flagship Jal Jeevan mission aims at providing functional household tap connections to every rural household of the country, more than 194 million households by 2024. By now, we have achieved more than 61% progress in the just 3.5 years since launch of the mission, and the massive scale on which we are working is equivalent to providing tap water to country of the size of Egypt or Ethiopia every year. However, it is not just scale but the challenges through which we are navigating are unique ranging from cold deserts of Ladakh to sandy hot deserts of Jaisalmer, and from the highest rainfall, re rainfall regions of Meghalaya to water scarce area of Western Rajasthan and Gujarat, which requires innovative solutions. We have also incorporated IoT-based technology solutions in monitoring real-time service delivery under Jaisalmer mission and innovated one of its kind of field testing kits for water quality monitoring at local levels. We are making invisible groundwater visible and creating water aware communities through the Adal Puja Yojana under National Aquifer Mapping Program. We have mapped more than. Israel is among the leading nations in the field of innovation, particularly in the area of water and agriculture technology. The Israeli expertise, innovation, and technology in the areas of water purification, water use efficiency, desalination, transportation of water, wastewater uh, reuse and recycle, it is amongst the others have made it a leading country in water sector management. May it be innovative water treatment solutions under the Namami Ganga Mission, promoting circular economy under Earth Ganga. IoT-based technologies under Jal Jeevan Mission, aquifer mapping, mapping under NACWIM, or promoting water use efficiency under Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana. We have created an ecosystem of, for healthy participation from private sector in the water or meaningful partnerships. Many amongst you present over here may have been our partners in this journey. And I would appeal to all of my friends from India Israel Business Forum to come forward and join us in our journey. Today, over 50 projects in water sector are being implemented, complete or completed by various Israeli companies in various states. But there is a huge scope in building on this existing partnership in water sector. The theme of India Israel G20 Presidency is Vasudhev Kutumbuka which means one earth, one family, and one future. The theme affirms the value of all life, human, animal, plant, and microorganisms, and their interconnectedness on the planet Earth in the wider universe. India and Israel can work together to overcome many of the challenges that the world faces today. I have complete faith 
that both the countries will further enhance cooperation in various matters and today's event will be a milestone in this direction. Thank you very much. Yeah, we are having the arrangements made here. I'd like to request Mr. Rakesh Bharti Mittal from CII to join us on this MOU signing table. And the first MOU will be with Dr. Rakesh. I think the cameramen at the back are having a problem, so please so accommodate them. Can we have a round of applause for this? So Our next uh, MOU uh, signing uh, is with uh, Ms. Sabine Both are with the agreement with the two well. Deputy Director General for International Business Affairs, the Israel so, Export and okay, International that's Cooperation that's Institute. And of course, Mr. Rakesh Bharti Mittal, past president CI. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we have each page and post signature on the last? It has to have a Both signed, sealed, and now exchanging it. Can we ha have a round of applause for this? And now for the photo op. With the agreement, please. Want to see again? Sir. May I request you to come closer, please? Okay. Can you look at the camera, please? Sir. And the last MOU being signed today is again with Mr. Rakesh. So great, this is the final one which has been signed. Can we have a round of applause for this as well? So three MOUs signed, sealed and declared. After this photo op, we'll have everyone back on the dais. Madam, look here, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here and see this big group in the room of Indian and Israeli business people. Uh, we have, as said before, we have made quite significant strides in our relations, especially in the last few years, especially in trade. And uh, as was said also before, it's never enough. So we, yeah, we are now 40, 50 times almost our trade from the time we established a full diplomatic relations, but the direction is up and we have to work. So to be practical, 
since we know that the weak part, at least in our side, is follow-up, I wanted to tell you that here in the first row there is Natasha, our commercial attaché, and please communicate with her. She will help you doing the follow-up uh, for your meetings. If you're looking for other, for the Indian counterparts especially, if you're looking, looking for other partners, you met some, you want to continue, you feel that it's not working the way you expected, please approach us, be proactive, and we will try to accommodate. So I will conclude by wishing everyone a very fruitful and successful meeting, and hopefully it will be for the benefit of both our countries and people. Thank you. Uh, because uh, soon after this we have a presentation from Yel Rabia Zadok, Deputy Director General and Head of Economic Diplomacy Division, Israel Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which will come on straight. spoken already enough on this. So we'll take one question on that. On today's event. Today's event. Today's event. I'm happy to talk about today. India looks to the future as it encourages innovation, it has huge markets, and an efficient and available workforce. It is an attractive destination for investment. It is an important market for manufacturing and commercial companies. And it is expected to become the third largest economy in the world in less than 10 years. The Israeli companies that are present here reflect the combination of precious, long-standing experience and cutting-edge technologies that can be relevant to the Indian market. Many of them are already active in India. We look forward to increased trade, manufacturing and investment in both directions. The second point I would like to make, and the Minister uh, Cohen uh, referred to it, is the effect of the Abraham Accords and the regional perspective. The Abraham Accords are a new horizon for regional collaboration and economic resilience, and here is the India play a role. We should and can collaborate together with regional partners. The I2U2, the Joint Forum for India, the USA, the United Arab Emirates, and Israel, reflects the understanding that we need to collaborate in order to address successfully common challenges. The member countries of the forum have identified six main areas of cooperation. Food security, water, energy, transportation,